Hi guys! In today's video, we'll be doing this Jack Skellington inspired doll. I took some creative liberties when I did this doll design wise, but I hope you enjoy my take on the character. This is a female Monster High doll body that I used, but once the suit was on, you can't really tell so, but if you want to, you can make it a gender bender. The most logical thing would have been to use the Monster High Skeleton doll for this, since she is literally a skeleton, but I had already used mine for my Cop Sprite repaint, so I chose this doll instead because she has a very round head, so that would fit the best for the character. So firstly we're going to be working on the head, and as usual I start by removing the hair since we won't be needing it, and I both cut off the excess from the outside and I scrape the glue from the inside. After that we're going to do some modifications to the head, for instance I start by using my Saturn knife to cut away the ears because we won't need those, and once I cut it away as flush to the head as possible I used a hand file to smooth it out. Then after that I moved on to the nose and then the lips, and the same thing, cutting away everything we don't need and then using a file to smooth out, because we don't want there to be any flesh on the head essentially, we are just trying to make it look, you know, like a flat skeleton. Next I use some acetyl nail polish remover to remove the remainder of the factory paint of the face, and once that was done I got out some nail acrylic liquid and powder, and I used this to fill out the small dent that still was by the mouth, also the ear holes, and the actual holes from the hair on top of the head. I didn't show how to do this because I've showed how to use the acrylic in my previous videos both in my corpse pride and also my deep sea mermaid. I smoothed out the acrylic again to make as good a canvas as possible, before moving on to acrylic paint, applying this in thin layers until I built up the opacity that I needed to make the whole, now skull, all completely white. Once it was completely opaque, I allowed it to dry, and then I primed it with the Mr. Super Clear spray so that whatever I put on top would stick, and I got out a bit of chalk pastel, a few watercolor pencils, and some more acrylic paint to start the actual repaint of the face. I started by using a light grey pencil to sort of sketch everything out, and as I mentioned in the start, I took some creative liberties, such as I chose to make more defined teeth rather than having just lines by the mouth, and also had it a lot slimmer than his actual mouth because he's is quite wide compared to his head, but I felt that might look a little strange compared to the monster high head. And I also chose to give him actual eyes inside, you know, the empty holes of his head, because even though that works really cool for the actual character in the stop motion movie to just have the empty eye holes, I felt on a doll like this it was just not look right, and also it might be a very boring video for you guys to watch. So I decided to give him almost like ghostly silvery pale eyes that would be very shaded, so there'd be something looking back at you. Once I had everything sketched out in the grey, I moved on to black both my black pencil and also black acrylic paint for the places that just needed to be opaque. And also chose to make, you know, the eye holes more of a point at the outer edge because I felt like it, you know, gave more of an kind of, you know, evil, sultry look. But if you want it to be more precise like the movie, you can make it all round. I used black chalk pastel to shade the eyes but also around the face just because it helps, you know, add definition and also just give a very sultry look, especially I like to shade the eyes. And here I did it really heavily because I wanted them to look very, you know, inset and deep 
in his head. So again, this kind of mysterious look. And for around the face, I added a lot more shading than the actual character has because again, his head is completely round, so there's nothing to really shade much. But the Monster High doll does have some sort of definition both at the temple and at the cheekbones. So I went in with the chalk pastel there to define it more because why not work with what we have and make it look just a little more like an actual skull. At this point I couldn't build up the colors any further, so I gave it another spray of the Mr. Super Clear and then let it dry so I could work on top. This just gives new grip so you can build up the colors even further. Compared to a lot of the other dolls I've done, this was fairly simple in terms of the face again because there's not much going on. But it was a lot of repetition and layers doing the pretty much same thing in order to build up the shadow and the gradient going from dark to light the way I want it. So this is the thing where just be patient and build up the layers until you're happy. I use white acrylic paint to highlight the eyes a little bit and also a bit on the teeth just to give a very defined color. When I was happy with the face, I gave it the final seal of Mr. Super Clear before going on to the neck. I didn't do that much there, just painted white, adding some line and a bit of shading because you wouldn't see it much. And then finally the hands as well before sealing both in with the spray in the end. Now onto the suit. I used a kitchen film and tape method to make my pattern for the pants at first. Since his legs is very straight and without definition of joints, I straightened out the pattern. Then I'm going to get out some black fabric and cut out the pieces. And I apologize if it's not completely obvious what I'm doing. Recording black fabric is always a bit of a challenge. But you want to sew a front and matching back piece together by the outer edge. Do this to both sets, obviously. Then you put the two together and sew down the front curve and a bit of the back curve that will be around the butt. Then you lay it flat again, facing front. And then you can sew down the pant legs. Then you can fit them to your doll and close the back with either Velcro or buttons. Then for the top, I used the same method to get the pattern. And I kept the pattern fairly simple, having the sleeves attached to the actual piece. Just because the fabric I used had a bit of stretch to it, so I could do that and make it easier. And then you cut out your pieces and sew them together. Once the basic jacket is sewn, you want to hem the edges of the neckline and also the sleeves. Then I cut out a piece with some hanging triangles, ruffles, I don't know what to call this, and sewed this upside down to the bottom so it would hang down kind of like, you know, the penguin part of the suit. 
but I made a few layers because I wanted a bit more volume. For the illusion of a shirt underneath, you want to cut out a white piece of fabric and attach this underneath. Then I added a color to the suit, even though again it's black so it's hard to tell, before using white acrylic paint to paint on the stripes. And the stripes were a really smart um, design choice for the actual character because it honestly really does a lot for the suit. For the final details I added a white button before cutting out fabric pieces for the bow and then I glued them onto cardstock and painted that to make them stiff so it would hold their shape, glued it in place and then he's done. I didn't end up filming it but I just added a pair of black monster high shoes to complete the outfit and then here he is. This doll has been requested recently, again it's probably because of the season, but I really hope you guys enjoyed my take on it. A few have been asking for a Sally doll and I was thinking about making one to match this one because I actually made one last year but it was quite a different style so I made you one, we'll see. Thank you guys so much for watching, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in a new one real soon, bye!